Right, good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this meeting of Plans East. If I could introduce the uh, people sitting here. Uh, my name is Councillor Paul Kasker and I am Chairman of the uh, planning meeting tonight. To my left is Councillor Brian Rolfe, who is my Vice Chairman. Uh, to his left is Jackie Leather, who is taking the minutes and who will advise us on the protocol. And to my right is Richard Fox. Uh, who is the planning officer who will be introducing the applications. Mm -hmm. I would... I need to read the webcasting uh, announcement. I would like to remind everyone present that this meeting will be broadcast live to the internet or filmed and will be capable of repeated viewing or another use by such third parties. If you are seated in the lower public seating area, it is likely that the recording cameras will capture your image and this will result in the possibility that your image will become part of the broadcast. This may infringe your human and data protection rights and if you wish to avoid this, you should move to the upper public gallery. I would say I'm going to be a voting chairman tonight. Uh, I take it our speakers have, have been advised of the, uh, of the procedure. Uh, members, the uh, next item three is minutes of the last meeting. Uh, are you all in agreement that they be signed as a true record? Yep, yeah, thank you very much. Number four, apologies for absence. <coughs> yes, Chairman, we have apologies from councillors Bedford, Brady, Hadley, McEwen and Jones. Thank you. Five declarations of interest. Does anyone have any declarations of interest? No? Okay, that's five. Six, any other business? Jackie, do we have any other business? No other business, Chairman. Thank you. Number seven is to note uh, the Epping Forest District local plan submission version. Uh, I think we can take that as read now. And so we will go on to number eight, which is development control. Mr Fox, if you would introduce the first application. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, before I get into the presentation itself, I'd just like to cor correct a couple of type typographical errors in the report. Um, if members could turn firstly to page 15, which is the, essentially the cover page with the conditions on it, the recommendation and conditions. Uh, in the second condition down, uh, the first line, the roof light window openings in the, it says eastern, that should read southwestern flank elevation. If members could note that. And, and, and I'm afraid there's a, a couple of, the, what, you will notice a theme developing uh, because on the following page, page 16, uh, under the description of proposal section, the third paragraph, uh, the first line, the existing garage and store to be removed are attached to the, should read northeastern flank wall, not western. If members could just note that, please. Uh, and on the following paragraph, the following line, in fact, uh, where it says the eastern side of the house, it should be the southwestern side of the house. And I'm sorry if in reading this report this has caused confusion, um, but um, hopefully the, the clarifying this will make things more straightforward. And finally, similar, similar points on page 21, uh, the, under the section impact on the living conditions of neighbouring properties, second paragraph, the second line where it says the northeastern flank boundary, it should read the southwestern flank boundary. And finally, uh, you'll probably be pleased to hear, um, 
on the third line from the bottom of that paragraph where it says starting roof lights should read on the southwestern roof slope. So my apologies for that, uh, Chairman, and apologies for it made, it made understanding the issues difficult, but that, that, that's the correct position. So uh, if you're happy, Chairman, I'll, I'll run through the... The item. Thank you, Mr. Fox. We'll have a whip round later to buy a compass for that. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> yes, yes. Planners and compasses and all of that. Don't yes. go together, obviously. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, the, the application site is uh, outlined in red for you there. It's one of a group of detached properties on Forest Drive, close to the centre of Faden Boys. Um, they ha share fairly similar architectural characteristics. And the forest drive itself uh, gradient slopes to the north um, and also actually drops down within the sites to the southeast as well. And there's an aerial photograph showing the site. The, the, the red arrow, arrow actually shows the corner of uh, 38 Forest Drive, which, if you can make out the, my cursor there, that is the actual application site just in there. Um, that's the existing ground floor plan. Um, it uh, shows the relationship with the neighbouring properties, uh, particularly number 40 here and number 36. And there are two existing windows in number 36 there and there. This is the proposed floor plan. Uh, not totally clear, I'm afraid. It didn't come out too well on reproduction. But uh, essentially what is proposed are two side ground floor extensions approximately in these positions here so it's extending out oh, sorry forgive me um, further to the side on both on both sides um, but maintaining uh, separations with between both flank boundaries here the proposal also includes a rear sitting out area together with a, a patio um, this shows the first floor plan. Um, there is, uh, this is essentially just a, a bedroom and ensuite. And uh, the roof plan here shows that there's no actual dormer extensions. The only uh, lights in the roof are Velux style. Uh, these are the existing elevations, the front elevation from Forest Drive. Um, this is the side elevation. Uh, facing number, uh, let me get this the right way around now, 36. Um, this faces number 40, and this is the rear elevation. You can see the, the existing garage in this position here, that's proposed to be demolished as part of the scheme. Um, these are the proposed elevations. These show the extension. This is roughly the area to be extended here on the side uh, adjacent to number 40. And approximately this is the extent of the extension facing number 36. Uh, so this is the side elevation uh, facing 36 here uh, with three windows and the inset sitting out area. And this is the side elevation facing number 40. And, and here is the rear uh, with the sitting out area beyond the patio. Um, this shows the street scene. Um, as those of you that are familiar with the site will know, there are sort of fairly distinctive features to these bungalows, including uh, use of gables, front projecting gables and, and bays. Uh, and this actually also shows the, the gradual slope down Forest Drive towards the centre of Thaden Boys. Uh, a couple of photographs um, showing the, the the, the application uh, site and its relationship, the current relationship with neighbouring properties. This is the application site here. And that shows uh, number 40, which has been extended, and there's a flat roof extension just in there, which you can make out. Um, that's the existing side elevation with number 36 here, which has um, a, a garage type. It's more of a storage structure uh, attached to the side of it. Uh, and this shows um, one of the two existing windows uh, in number 36. The other one is tucked away, if you can see where my cursor, cursor is now, just in behind this structure here. So there are, in fact, two windows uh, on that elevation at number 36. Um, 
that's essentially all I wanted to say by way of pointing out the site, Chairman. Uh, the issues, as I said, are, uh, uh, I think, are pretty clear from the report. Uh, the, the design of the building, uh, the impact on neighbours, and I think it's probably uh, important to point out that these plans have gone through several iterations, and I think it's probably about the third version we're on now. So, so uh, clearly applicants have engaged with us to try and overcome some of the concerns that we've had. Chairman, thank you. Thank you very much. We have uh, two speakers. The first is Councillor Peter Gooch of the Thaden Boys Parish Council. I'm sure you are only too well aware you have three minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Good evening, members. Uh, I think my, my comments can be fairly brief. Uh, first of all, we'd like to acknowledge the, uh, the efforts of the planning officer and indeed the applicant. This is indeed the third amendment which we've uh, seen. And the Parish Council actually are very happy with the uh, design. We believe it does actually um, maintain the integrity of this cohesive group of six bungalows. Um, the, the issues are, are really a fairly minor. Um, on the original application, the materials to be used were a grey slate roof and grey aluminium windows, which clearly wouldn't have fitted. Uh, we have since um, heard verbally from the applicant at the Parish Council planning meeting, and indeed you will note on the page 20 of the planning officer report that uh, she actually says that the, um, the proposal for the roof now is plain grain tiles and, uh, and timber um, composite windows. Uh, however, there's no condition in the, uh, in the grant here uh, about... Um, uh, ensuring that those those materials are, are, are kept. So we would usually you would expect to see a condition that, uh, that in, regarding the use of materials and that these should match the original. So that was uh, one strong suggestion we'd like to make. And the other, uh, you note, we, as we've said, there's been a number of amendments. Um, however, again, there's no condition which says that the development should be carried out strictly in accordance with the approved plans. So uh, really, Mr Chairman and members, all we're asking for is two additional conditions to be placed on this grant. One, that material should match the original, and two, that the, um, the development is carried out strictly with the approved plans. We are conscious of the um, objection from the neighbour of 26. Um, I believe some of the anxiety has been caused by the fact that you might have seen on the picture that the existing vegetation was stripped out um, and uh, the neighbour was quite worried about privacy overlooking uh, etc. But um, it is important therefore that there is a robust uh, landscaping scheme, but I can see that has been addressed uh, by condition in the uh, in the application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our second speaker is Mr. Peter Larcher, the applicant. You sir have three minutes. Can you activate your microphone, please? Sorry. Thank you. Is that okay? Yep. Fine. Thank you. Um, from our in initial application, we've considerably changed. Uh, the uh, design of the, the renovation works to the bungalow um, with close um, concerns with the planning officer and through the parish council's concerns. Um, we've amended the roof structure considerably from, from the first proposal, which brings the existing height, it remains at the, the roof, the new roof remains at the existing height. And we've also created uh, a side extension on the number th side of number 36. And um, we've moved a, a small gable, which obviously mirrors the existing gable on the bungalow. Um, with all, all the amended plans, we have had a change of materials of the windows and the roof tiles, which the gentleman there just commented about. We changed them materials uh, of the windows and the roof tiles back in October last year which was noted on the re revised drawings that all parties had. I did in fact go to the parish meeting um, a couple of weeks ago and reiterated that that's what we were changing. But obviously that doesn't seem to have stuck. Obviously you know, it appears to be a little bit of distrust that we won't be carrying out the works as on the drawings. Um, you know, 
So you can imagine my concerns that the parish council at, at the meeting with me uh, said there were no further concerns and they would remove their objection that are made in December. Well, my concerns are we sit here tonight and the parish council have not removed their objection and um, two minor ele elements that surely could be controlled by the planning officer in a condition. We just feel that we've been pushed along for months and months, which is obviously uh, a, a financial cost for my wife and myself on rented accommodation, and obviously we want to get on with the works. Now, we've tried very, very hard to blend in with everything, and I think the outcome of what we've got now complements the two adjoining properties that have, have been um, renovated over the last couple of years, and I, I believe it fits in very, very well. <coughs> With regard to the comment about the hedging on number th against number 36, we will of course be re reinstating the hedging um, to a considerable degree. Um, we tidied up the site, which had been overrun for probably 10 or 15 years, um, and I don't suppose anyone had any complaints with all the all the hedging that was leaning over into the pathway. So, we, but we've taken that on board and removed all that, and we get comments back that um, it's unacceptable and um, we need to put some new stuff. So we're quite happy to do that and we will put an application in for landscaping as required, uh, as the planner um, officer suggests. So um, it, we're just very despondent that the council, or the parish council have kept their objection in place over minor issues that could have been sorted out with, 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 at the officer stage. Okay, thank you. Okay. If I could ask you to, uh, uh, to, to finish there. Can I ask you to turn your microphone off now, please? Thank you very much. Before we go to councillors, could I just ask, Mr Fox, I believe you think some of this may actually be covered in the latest version of the application that is before us. Yeah, um, yes, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, the, the, the latest revised drawings show um, the materials to be uh, plain clay tiles, timber composite windows, and a render, which if essentially is fairly similar to, to the existing materials. But, um, I mean, given that, that that's the proposal, I see no harm in, in belt and braces, if members agree, in putting a condition on to that effect either. But um, it's, it's not always the case that one could get an absolute exact match. So if we can ask for samples to be submitted, that's a standard condition. And again, the, 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 the drawings, we've been through various versions, but uh, if one wants to reinforce that this is the scheme that members are happy with, assuming members are happy with that, then again we can put a condition onto that effect, Chairman. Okay, thank you. Right, councillors, the recommended decision is to grant permission. <laughs> Councillor Philip. Thank you, <coughs> thank you, Chairman. Now, I, I can I start by uh, appreciating the changes that have been made by the applicant in conjunction with the planning officer and the parish council. It's really always encouraging to see people working together to come up with a better solution. And I genuinely believe this is a better solution. Very pleased to hear what the planning officer said. I, I was actually going to suggest those two conditions in terms of uh, the materials and in accordance with the plans. In accordance with the plans and calling out exactly which version of the plans I think is important because as has been pointed out, there have been three separate versions of it. And it, it's not that we don't trust anyone, it's just... <laughs> that when you go back in a couple of years' time to look at things, if you haven't got it called out in detail, you, it's a bit more difficult to track down where things are going. Um, and I know certainly on the other um, bungalows in that area, we, we did condition in terms of materials as well to, to match what was shown. So with those two additions, I'm quite happy to support this and would encourage uh, my fellow members to support this. Okay, thank you very much. Um, would you like to propose those two conditions then in some form and we'll... Uh... Chairman, I'm happy to propose two additional conditions to um, call out strictly in accordance with the appropriate numbered plan and I, I'll, I'll leave it to the planning officer to decide exactly how to do that. Yeah. I'm sure they'll, they'll know exactly what's right. Um, and just as a similar condition that uh, conditions the materials, something along the lines of uh, the external finishes of roofing and, and fenestration to match what's uh, shown on the plans. Thank you very much. I think that is belt braces, but there's no reason against that. Do we have a seconder for those two additional conditions, please? Thank you. Oh, uh, Councillor Grigg, all those in favour, please show. 
Thank you. Unanimous Chairman. Thank you. With the addition of those two um, conditions, may I ask if the members are in agreement with the recommended decision to grant permission? All those in favour, please show. Unanimous Chairman. Thank you very much. Planning permission is granted, and can I commend you for um, working with the planning officers to, uh, to, to overcome any problems that might have occurred during the course of this application? Thank you very much. Right, we will now go on to uh, application two on our list. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, before, before I run through uh, this application, uh, there's an update for members. Uh, we have received a petition, we received it actually in, in our office yesterday, um, and it's objecting to the application uh, on four grounds. First of all, I should point out it's, been, it's got 88 signatures to, to it, uh, and the petition reads, Faden Beauty objects to the Nail and Beauty Salon's planning permission at 16 Forest Drive, Faden Boys, uh, and then there's four bullets. A threat for Thaden Beauty, village too small, not enough footfall for the two salons, and there is insufficient parking. Uh, and the uh, chief signature, signatory of the petition is uh, Debbie. Uh, that's the only update I have, Chairman, and I'll just quickly run through um, okay. the, the proposal, which hopefully won't take too long. Um, this is the application site. I'm sure. All members will be familiar with this part of Forest Drive um, in, in the heart of Thaden Boys, close to the underground station. Uh, the application site is towards the northern end of uh, this parade, which is essentially uh, there's a this parade of shops um, on the western side, northwestern side here, and another parade on the eastern side, which, which wraps around the corner here uh, towards the underground station. Um, that's the actual site itself. It doesn't show very much, um, other than the fact that there isn't uh, there is a, a rear yard area and fire escape, um, but there is no parking at the rear of the site. Um, the application is retrospective, as those who have uh, walked walked uh, along this parade recently will have noticed. Uh, the site in question is small and cute that you can just make out there. Uh, I would stress that the fact that the application is retrospective has no bearing on uh, our deliberations this evening. Uh, one has to uh, assess it on its merits. Um, similarly, the adver advertisement signage which has been erected is under investigation by our enforcement team and will require advertisement consent. But Chairman, that, that again is a separate issue. What we're here to consider tonight is, is the change of use. Um, the parade itself is, uh, on both sides, is, is fairly healthy in as much as uh, when I had a look around, there were only two vacant units, so it's, it's quite strong. It's got a good mix of uh, retail and professional services uh, there. Uh, then I'm just, we're just looking over across the western side now. Um, and that's, as I said, it, it, it is what it is. Chairman, I'm sure people know the area and know the site in question. So, as I said, the, the issues uh, the issues are set out in in the report um, and on. Uh, so, taking all things into consideration, officers are recommending approval. Chairman, thank you. Thank you very much. We have uh, two speakers. Our first speaker is Mr. Jeff Pelter, an objector. You sir have three minutes. If you could ask you to put your microphone on. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members. My name is Geoffrey Poulter. I'm acting as representative for the proprietor, Miss Debbie Rutland, of Thaden Beauty, Leaven Forest Drive, Thaden Boys. Established in June 2000, providing various beauty services, majority of which are related to now treatments. As a single mother, it has taken Miss Rutland years to build up the business with local clients and to create a strong reputation. Working alone most of the time on an appointment system and also requesting walking clients to wait or have a coffee opposite if the diary permits. 
However, having a new nail salon unit with five therapists trading directly opposite with a walk-in, no appointment system has had an adverse impact on the business of Thaden Beauty. There is just not enough custom in the area to support such a huge increase in supply of same such services. The parking in Thaden has been an issue for many years and it's getting worse. There is a two hour parking restriction in place in Forest Drive. Unfortunately, not many people obey this, making it almost impossible for shoppers to easily park. The new salon opened on the 17th of January 2019. At least three cars driven by the people working or connected with the salon are regularly parked in the parade all day. And within the surrounding roads, this is under pressure from parking time restrictions in yellow lines and this makes it even more difficult for the shoppers and clients. The appearance of the salon, small and cute, is certainly not in keeping with the village look or ethos. As you may be aware, Thaden Boys has been named Best Kept Village several times and Essex Village of the Year in numerous publications and news articles. The outside of this new salon has been adorned with numerous plastic flowers which clash dreadfully with the natural flowers in the baskets of the parade tended by the Horticultural Society, together with every other shop keeping the tone and aesthetics of the tradition of the area with natural flowers and small tree arrangements. There is also a flashing and illuminated neon sign as a shop window display, which you've addressed will be under a separate application. As such, this new salon opening has had an adverse effect on both Miss Rutland's business and the local businesses, and therefore I believe that the pro's new use of the business is inappropriate for a quiet village which is already more adequately supplied with this service. Miss Rutland has a signed petition of over 88 other local residents and all to support this objection. Together with the fact that the business has already breached planning and continues to do so, this is the reason for the objection. I have pictures of the neon sign, the flowers, and out my statement, and the objections if required. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, if you could turn your microphone off now, please. Certainly. Thank you. Our second speaker is uh, Councillor Peter Gooch again. Well, the Parish Council is very sympathetic um, to this, but our understanding from pure planning law is that because we're not designated a shopping centre within the new local plan, then um, from a planning perspective, our understanding is that little can be done regarding competition against one against one. Um, parking is a severe problem uh, in Thoden Boys, and hence we did suggest uh, a number of conditions which uh, happily the planning officer has included in here. For example, we are now seeing um, shopkeepers actually parking on the pavement directly in front of their shops, which obviously doesn't look great, but also is impeding the uh, pavement, such is the problems. But parking, I think, is a, um, a, another issue altogether which, uh, which needs to be addressed. Um, so as you would have seen in the report, um, the planning officer did actually raise no objections subject to the conditions which are actually in the, uh, in the, in the planning officer's report, which, which are important. Um, a number of concerns have been raised with us regarding this flashing neon light, but again, that's going to be separately uh, uh, dealt with. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, mm. I think perhaps, could I ask Mr Fox if he could describe to us the, the situation with regard to application changes of use which are sui generis, which is a wonderful Latin term to make sure we don't understand what it's all about, but if you could explain it. Yes, I, I, I will try my best, uh, Chairman. Um, yeah, a, uh, under planning legislation, a sui generis use is literally a use of, of itself or on its own. In other words, it isn't grouped into uh, one of the use classes. Uh, and for those not familiar with the planning jargon, there are various uh, used classes. Um, A1, for example, is shops. A2 is financial and professional services. A3 is restaurants. A4 is uh, 
uh, is sort of public houses and things like that. A5 is hot food takeaways, and so it goes on. And, and most specific operators fall neatly or uses. So a, a butcher's would be class A1, for example. A pharmacist would be class A1 because it's a shop where you go in and, and buy things. So, it, so, so most uses, you know, most operators, uh, whether it's you know, you know, whoever the pharmacist is, um, it'd still be an A1. Um, and you, one can change use between an A1 use, so for, say from a butcher's to a pharmacist without needing planning permission. Now, sui generis uses are, as I said in my opening words, uses of themselves. So anything that is a sui generis use, and nail bars are, require planning permission for, to change to a sui generis use or from a sui generis use, if I'm making sense. So it's regardless of what it goes to or from, it always needs planning permission. So that's why this application came around. So if it, if, if it was, for example, from another, from another hairdresser's, uh, as was there, it wouldn't need planning permission because they're both A1. If it, was, if it was to a butcher's, it wouldn't need planning permission because it was A1. But because it is this sui generis use of, it, of its own, it requires planning permission. So I, I hope I've tried to make it as clear as I can. It's sort of every single time one has a sui generis use, if one's proposing it or one's changing use from it, it always requires planning permission. If that, so, sorry if I've laboured it. But, no, that's um, very clear. Uh, Thank you very much. That's, uh, I think that's a very clear description of the situation. Um, well, members, the recommended decision is to grant permission with conditions. I've no doubt, Councillor Philip, you will be the first. Thank you, Chairman. Um, as the Parish Council pointed out, this is actually quite a difficult one. Um, we do, we are probably oversupplied in Thaden Boyce with uh, hairdressers and beauty salons and the like. Um, not that I use them myself very often, um, but there is a lot there, and it does affect the vitality of the high street. It's, it is difficult though because I'm struggling to find a good planning reason why I can uh, urge councillors not to accept this. Um, as everyone knows, I do not like retrospective planning applications, but do recognise, as the planning officer said, we can't take that into account. Um, I'm glad to see that the illuminated sign will require additional planning. I'm glad to see, in terms of the conditions, that there's no parking on the forecourt and no built structures externally either. I think these are all good things. I completely understand um, the viewpoint of the owner of Theoden Beauty. Um, and I should probably think about declaring an interest since I fixed a water leak for her after the Christmas market, but I don't think that's really an interest. Um, I'm concerned partially that the sui generis use gives the ability to move to other things of its own kind. Um, that there could be, other than a nail bar, sorry. Can I just ask what's yeah, yeah, so, so, sorry, Cass, I, 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 I do, do apologize for interrupting you or shaking my head. I didn't mean to do it so because Yeah, it wouldn't, it, one sui generis to another sui generis does require planning permission. Sorry, I, I should have made that clear earlier. Thank you for that. That's a useful clarification. So that gives me a little bit of uh, reassurance there. I do understand the issue around parking. Parking, as we know, um, and my colleague, Councillor Whitbread, also knows in Thaden is a perennial issue, as I think it is probably in most places. However, the difficulty there is that before this was a nail bar, it was a hair salon. I'm not convinced that we can say that there's significantly more parking required for a nail bar than for a hair salon. Um, I completely understand that five um, nail positions within a village of our size will impact uh, business, but again, I can't find the, the reasons for um, refusals. I think at this stage what I'll say is that if any, of, if the officer or any of my fellow councillors can suggest a good reason why we could refuse it, then I would be happy to support that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Whitehouse. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I'm very sympathetic to Thaden Beauty as well, but it's very difficult because competition is not a planning ground. If this is approved, is there any way in which we can deal with the issue that the objector raised about the artificial flowers? Because they do look very out of keeping with the centre, village centre. Uh, Mr Fox? Um, 
difficult to, uh, to answer bluntly. Uh, if, it, if it was highway land, and I suspect it isn't, then something could be done. But I suspect it's just a private forecourt, in which case it's just it's just taste, and obviously <laughs> taste differ. Uh, right. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Well. I seem to remember we had we had another case last year in Thaden Boys where we, uh, the question of what went on the forecourt was uh, became quite a sizable issue when the, when the application came before us. It's quite right. So um, I'm, I'm aware this is a, a live issue there. Um, do any other councillors have any comments? I'm, I'm looking for other people who may have a view on this. Came they numb? Um, our problem is, of course, we have to give a planning reason. If we do not, someone will simply go to appeal and win it anyway. Um, I'm not entirely sure what we can do about this. Uh, as much as I am actually delighted to see that the, the large amount of people who have supported the existing business and wish it obviously to prosper, uh, but we have to abide by the strict planning laws. We're not allowed to take competition. We're not allowed to take these uses into consideration in making a verdict. Um, Councillor Philip, you don't seem to be getting any help from your fellow members here, I'm afraid. Um, uh, Councillor Grigg. I think you've summed it up. We're sympathetic, but faced with the legality of the situation and what little we can do in this case, uh, unless somebody comes up with a, a reasonable reason for refusal, um, I think we have no alternative to, to pass it. I'm afraid, looking at the evidence we've been presented with, I, I, I agree with you. Um, the, the question, oh, Councillor Whit. Yeah, Chair, Chairman, in, in busier high streets, we, we have percentages of certain types of shops. Could this not be applied down in Faden Boys? Uh, it certainly doesn't in Ongo, I have to say, because we had this with the state agents. Nothing against the state agents, but we had this with the state agents. And we tried to restrict the number of the state agents, and they promptly went to appeal and won. So we, we were left in no doubt that we could not restrict the number of the state agents. And I have a feeling this will be the same situation. Mr Fox, anything to add? Um, yeah, only to agree with you, Chairman. Uh, there, there's um, four, I think it's four, um, uh, shopping streets in uh, in the district that are protected along the lines that, that you mentioned where where we seek to retain a certain proportion of A1 back to the jargon again, shops to, to everybody else um, a certain proportion but um, given the changes in retailing go government's policies have switched a little bit towards that and they're generally more happy in, in smaller parades like this in, in villages uh, and, and local shopping areas, as long as the units are actually occupied, that that is that is, is becoming the key thing these days with 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 e-tailing and all all the rest of it. Um, so yes, we we it, it, and it is ultimately a matter for the local plan, and the local plan, as as, as we all know, is is going to examination commencing next week. Uh, and in there, there are various um, shopping parades which are protected in that way. But the decision was taken that Faden Boys wasn't one of those because because it wasn't large enough essentially okay thank you that's very clear um well if if no one else has anything to add i think we must we must go to a vote the recommended decision is to grant permission with conditions uh all those uh, in favor please show now ten chairman those against Two chairman. And abstentions? Two chairman. In which case, planning permission is granted with the conditions as listed. Uh, do we have any items for the exclusion of public and press? No chairman. No, we don't. Um, in which case, if there is no other matters before the committee, I will declare the meeting closed at ten past eight. Thank you, Chairman.